Hey, what's going on guys? Kumiki KNZ here. In this video, we'll finally make our shell actually appearing on the screen and also we'll make it echoing whatever uh, key is pressed by the user and also we're going to be storing the user input. Uh, later on, uh, we're going to be using that user input to compare with the existing files to figure out whether we have that file or not, but that's a different story. So I just really want to break this into, into the small chunks and rather go for a deep explanations for every single inst instruction instead of uh, just copy pasting a code or things like that. So uh, we'll do this just right in a moment, but before that, uh, let me fix uh, a small error and improve the code a little bit. So here in the run.shell, uh, the problem is that uh, we don't have exactly the size of floppy image. Uh, you remember that we are writing floppy image to the USB flash drive, so I say floppy only to refer uh, the size of the image uh, and not the device, not the storage device. Okay, so I was subtracting three sectors, but now we have already up to six sectors, so let's fix that. So this should be 74. Right, minus six, uh, two, eight, uh, 80. Yeah, minus six, so minus six sectors. And I'm not going to be specifying them any longer, just say used. It's going to equal like this. And also, just to pretty print stuff a little bit, I want to make it like this. So games would be entered one by one if we have some, you know, some different software later on like hex editor to develop boot sector games just right in the operating system it's okay so we can just uh uh pretty uh pretty print this stuff here okay um yeah i think this is this is okay so part four yeah open the terminal and let's run let's inspect let's recall what we have from the previous part so run.shell and here we go so we have a game that has been loaded from that has been loaded from our shell believe it or not so first we load from the bootloader bootloader loads uh, the files to the memory and the shell then we jump to the shell okay let me just probably demonstrate you that this quickly again Okay, so we um, write in uh, our files to the memory at this location, then at this location we write uh, our shell, then we make a far jump, okay, so here is the, the bootloader, standard address, then the next 512 bytes are occupied by the files, so some sort of a file system we can think uh, we can think of it as a rudimentary file system and then we have 512 12 bytes for binary executable for our shell which is intended to run to load the game to load a certain game from this uh no, sorry a certain game from sectors four five or six from the image from the storage device to the exactly to the boot sector right and then make a far jump to execute that over there so this is how it's working okay and here I, I, I was just hard coding the sector so sector 4 is going to result in loading snake so let's quickly recall that as well so here we can play snake okay playing snake nice good escape okay then sector 5 uh, playing Tetris okay so we go specify the sector 5 which is plain tetris cool pretty self-explanatory so here we go okay guys i hope it's clear and now let's finally no uh, uh another another little thing here so it's, usually it's a good idea to define addresses uh to, de to define some variable like names for them and we can actually do it in a way uh, pretty similar to how this is done in C so here I just want to say define sorry define 
So what kind of addresses do we have? So this is going to be files, uh, files location, let's say files address, okay, and we use this one, um, yeah, it's a little bit, so let's just call this like shortcuts for addresses, for memory addresses, I just don't like the layout a little bit, okay, well, let's just make it let's make it better like this okay um, and now we can say yeah uh, so this is the physical this is the physical memory address load files to from sector from sector 2 if I'm not mistaken yeah from sector 2 okay then we want to define um, yeah, by the way copy here we use file address okay reading sector okay so now we have the shell address shell address and to load shell let's call this like files shell from sector 3 right yeah sector sector th th 3 yeah shell okay um uh and this is going to be or hold on a sec no uh here here we have a bit different uh, a, a bit different definition so yeah we define this as the segment so like this shell address and put it in and save copy and now we have the shell address here and here okay so do we have any more any other addresses nope we don't great so now I just want to make sure that it still runs and <laughs> it doesn't. Okay. Uh, yeah, just a typo. Uh, define. Define. Okay. Yeah. So we're still there. Okay, great. All right. So now the same, uh, well, some of the similar stuff to be done within the shell. Okay. So, 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 here uh, we have a boot sector, so where we're going to be running our games. So, here we want to define boot, boot sector address, and this is it, and... This is the physical memory address to load games to from sectors, uh, just not specify because we have many of them and later we can just change the layout. So physical memory address to load games to um boot sector address copy so we have the boot sector address here um i don't remember what kind of string we we've been 
print in here. Yeah, and by the way, yeah, this execute was, yeah, it just gets executed. It just, yeah, it just goes here. As far as the instruction pointer gets here, it just executes by default. We don't want that. We'll have a shell loop. So for now, we're no longer going, going to be executing anything. So let's see. Hold on a sec. Um, yeah, sorry, I just, uh, I, I made some horrible things. It's not a boot sector address, nope. This is the boot sector address, and this is the address for files. Physical memory address to load games into, onto, into, at, probably at. Okay, so here I want to define the, the, this this kind of thing that I'm doing now is comes really handy later on during the development so you don't really need to, to keep the addresses in mind you can use this like a variable like shortcuts so uh, how did I call it in boot files uh, ADDR files ADDR and put it here so physical address to load and we can copy from sector 2 all right uh, let's say from game sectors and I'm not sure guys but uh, I believe here we should say at because sound I, I believe this should sound more in more English um, yeah, I think we should say at here okay so Is this kind of it? So now we can use file address whenever we try this. Yeah, this was just for, yeah, uh, we will need this address anyway later on. So just let's keep it here. Mm. Here down below we'll specify the variables as well. Okay, so yeah, I think. I think this is kind of it. So now we can uncommand our loop and we should be now capable to see um, from the files so from the files we now should see this hello from sector 2 again I believe right and stuck in the infinite loop and there we are okay perfect okay guys so um, yeah, we don't actually need, so uh, here uh, we will print some, some greeting, some intro, let's say, and here down below, let's define some variables. So let's say we have, we have intro defined by, um, ends with probably yeah new line carriage return and zero so what to say something like type um i don't know list to list the games it's not yet implemented but ju just to just to give like welcome to game OS type yeah, let's have a look how it looks uh, yeah we got our message this is fantastic okay but uh, here is something guys that I don't really like um, and this is the fact that we 
don't actually clear the screen so let's have a look how we can clear our screen and in order to figure out how we can do this uh, we're going to be referencing yeah here I've prepared the interrupt 16 but let's first have a look at the interrupt 10 and yeah here uh, uh, when the H -A, uh, A H register is equal to zero we can set the video mode and AL holds the desirable video mode so we're going to be using text mode but this one so 80 characters by 25 and 16 colors 8 pages so this is what, it, what we're going to be using here so let's set the video mode uh, sorry so yeah here is the shell So here I want to set video mode to uh, 80 by 25 text mode. Okay, and here, here we go. So move AH 0x00 as specified in the documentation, then move AL. Uh, 0x03 zero zero so and here I just want to want to say that this is the text mode well um okay let's just probably still provide the commentaries here and then in this case uh, bias code to set video mode and then int hexadecimal 10 and actually okay uh, sorry guys sorry I didn't mean this sorry I meant let's just make it like this okay so yeah okay mike is here great um what else what else so here one want to print greeting intro and let's have a look at this stuff again okay welcome to game os type list to list the games uh that's pretty cool okay okay so now the shell itself and uh, the very first thing we want to do is to print the prompt the user prompt every time and i love the linux style uh, linux shell style prompt with a dollar sign so we'll, we're going to be using that so we can simply say move as i and prompt let's call it user prompt user prompt okay and call print string yeah print string so first thing we want to print user prompt that's pretty it and now let's define the user prompt down below so here define byte I want to make space dollar sign space like this and before that I want to have new line and then the carriage return and then the zero terminate zero terminating character at the end and let's have a look okay so yeah it's happening because it just prints the prompt all of the time and we're we are not reading uh, a single Kind of like bite from the keyboard so this is okay that it just printed this uh, all of the time okay let's go further on so now we need to uh, another essential variable we need to deal with is the user input so let's define this first so we say user input uh, and this would be we'll take uh, up to 12 bytes we don't need that much but that should be okay so times 20 defined by zero so this is how we can 
uh, make a kind of like array of uh, bytes that where we're supposed to be reading, uh, storing what we obtained by by pressing the key on a keyboard, and we would be storing that value to this user input. Okay, um, let's go further on. So we want to then we want to reset the user input reset user input so every time uh, we go to this loop one more time uh, we need to make sure that the user input from the previous uh, iteration has been erased completely so uh, here I'm using the DI register and I would now explain you why so I want to move the user input the user input to DI okay then I need to say move AL0, okay, and then times 20. Uh, I want to say store single byte. And finally, again, uh, I want to move the, uh, I, I want to move user input back to, uh, back to, uh, I'm, I want to put user input into DI. Uh, so data index and now in order to understand this piece of code uh, I want to show you the following documentation so here is how how the store a single byte works so uh, store a single byte stores a byte from the AL register uh, into the destination operand but uh, here we see that either AL AX or EAX depending so 8 bit 16 bit or 32-bit, uh, we use AB1 in this case. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we uh, it gets stored uh, to wherever uh, yes DI is pointing to. So this DI or EDI in 32-bit mode, but we're in the 16-bit mode. So yeah, this one DI. So uh, now. After this operation, uh, DI starts pointing to the user input. Um, I don't know, should I actually pro provide some... I, I just didn't command this sort of a thing. So yeah, I, I think the explanation would be just enough. So, or I don't even know if I should do, be doing that. Um, yeah, just don't command every single line here. What do we have? Or do we actually have? Yeah, actually, I do command every single string. Okay, then let's go for extended comment trees in this case. Yeah, let's go for extended comment trees. So here, point point source index register to intro. Strings address. Let's say to intro variable uh, address. By the way, here variables address variables address. Okay, and just just want to have the same comment trees along the way. Print. Uh, print intro to screen. All right. Ah, what have I done? Sorry, it's not here. Um, here I want to print the man. Yeah. Print intro to screen. Okay. Then here point source index yeah but the way we could have even well I, I still want to have this offsets because the operations are really like just to logically group the operations was I doing this yeah I was doing this in the boot sector as well in the bootloader as well okay yeah that makes sense um Point source index, or index register to user 
from user prompt variables address and print user prompt to screen okay now we want to point destination oh my god i hope i spell this des destination properly sorry guys it's just very quick uh check a uh, spelling check very quick spelling check here i don't want to have typos destination seems like it's okay okay so destination index uh register to user input yeah to user input variables address you know like when you understand this stuff it says it seems really redundant to redundant to uh, uh, give the commentaries in this style but however if you don't write in assembly for a couple of years like I did I didn't write in assembly for the previous couple of years I did a little bit of this before but then I totally forgot everything and that's really really the case uh, I would say okay so here let's just and also you know like this comment trace is something like uh uh embedding the documentation directly into the source code that, that's that comes in incredibly handy by the way so uh okay value okay so this is uh, uh al is used uh al stands for accumulator register low but let's just keep it al is used to is used by store single byte instruction okay um store zero at di and then increment di so this is done automatically this uh, this is how we can do two things using the single command and this comes very handy when you when you're trying to shave the bytes from the binary executable and when you're writing a boot sector game this might be extremely on the cards so just a, a hack a bit of a hack here okay uh, read next byte yeah from source index register and also here the same and then uh, and then increment um, sorry just where where was it store single yeah and then increment source index register so yeah uh i'll give a bit extended explanation the description here so it would have been not exactly the same but okay i think this this should be fine and then increment si okay uh same thing here by the way so one instruction does two things it reads the byte from uh from source index register and increments the source index register so th this comes very handy say we want to increment the source index register by a certain amount of bytes we can use this like times load single byte or times uh, store single byte for di here that's how we can manipulate the uh, the pointer uh, uh, manipulate the memory address where di is pointing to that that comes handy from time to time okay and here we want to point destination index register to user variable address again because uh, after this operation um, uh, and then increment di yeah because because after this information what happens so say the user input so 
let's say you're like byte one, two, three, four, five, six, and etc. Okay, so we do like store single single byte fires, we store and pointer increments, store again, pointer increments, store again, and eventually uh, after tw tw 20 times has exhausted, we uh, we are pointing to, I believe, 21st element, and then we need to draw back and point back to the first element, because there we're going to be storing uh, the actual user input. So first we reset the user input, and then we store it. So this is something similar to what memset does in C. All right, so what else? What else? Yeah, great. Uh, so here... Um, infinite shell loop. Okay. Okay, so let's go further on. So now we need to process uh, the bytes that we take from the user one by one. So let's create an, a label called next byte. All right, next byte. And here, the very first thing we want to do is to get the use, get the key press from the keyboard. And now this is where our in 16 comes under the stage and this is it so get keystroke from the keyboard with no echo uh well this is is a bit of an evil in our case but this is how it works i'm not sure if there is a get keystroke with echo I'm wondering do we no we don't have we just have this one so we need to implement echoing the character that user prints on our own and this is gonna be fun, so bear with me. Okay, so now I can simply say move to AH, I want to move 0x00. So this is the bias code uh, to read keystroke from keyboard. All right. And then int hexadecimal 16. So here we actually read a single, read a single keystroke from the keyboard. Okay, from the keyboard. Great. Okay, what else? And now. Uh, there would be a couple of, uh, so we need to keep track of the certain button types and enter and escape in particular. So if we match as uh, enter, uh, sorry, not escape, enter and backspace. So if we match enter, then we need to st start the routine that would be searching uh, whether the user uh, input matches actually the is searching whether the game the uh, user has, has entered is available within the files and this would be done, uh, done by comparing strings and another thing uh, we'll need to implement the backspace functionality because we don't have it by, by default and there we will need to do two things to kind of like uh, erase the character from the screen and from the buffer as well so that's pretty it. So by saying the buffer, I mean this user input buffer, right? So let's start. Uh, so uh, I will provide the placeholders for now because I just don't really want this video to uh, to be too long. And then in the in the next one, we'll we we'll be able to uh, we'll implement the erase part. And then we'll go for searching, comparing strings, and then we'll connect our execute, and then we're done. That's pretty it. That's the plan. Okay, so um, let's say compare and AH register stores, uh, it actually stores the value that we uh, hit, uh, the, 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 key, uh, the key scan code. Uh, so return, so in AH we have this bias scan code. 
and if we have the uh, hexadecimal 0x1c this is the case for the enter key so enter key pressed okay match whether enter key has been pressed and in this case uh, I want to say jump equals to search game but uh, not gonna be implemented this at the moment so here I can just say search search the game by name that's pretty it and then compare and if ah contains 0x0e which stands for backspace so um backspace okay we could have defined this keys as well by the way and probably we'll do this so let's say define enter code enter key uh, and here we say enter scan code okay and this is gonna be this value same for backspace so define backspace 0x0e backspace key and the backspace scan code that's it so now we can use enter key here and the backspace key here all right and in this case we want say jump equals to arrays so arrays arrays character okay but we will command this out as well so yeah actually uh, we're not going uh, to use ne neither of the uh, of this for now yeah neither of this for now but I just pro provide the placeholders so so let's say if enter key has been pressed we want to search the game by name and here if backspace key has been pressed we want to uh, erase character jump to let's say jump to search game well okay erase character okay uh, I think this is good enough for now and now one of the most essential things uh, by using a single instruction store a single byte we can actually do exactly the same we've been doing here uh, but instead of st st uh, storing zero we want to store uh, key uh, that has been pressed that has been pressed to into user input variable okay it's one of the most essential things and also uh, one of my favorite things we want to echo the character and uh, if we go back to 
well, this was uh, this has been introduced before and um, 10 just wondering 10 each yeah here it is so teletype output we want to echo the character so we need to move uh, 0 e hexadecimal and call this 10 a int 10 10 h interrupt so I say move a h hexadecimal 0 e and this is the bias code uh, for teletype output we can uh, grab the commentary from the print string um, Uh, yeah, it's a bit more extended. Yeah, let's let's stick to this bias code for uh, character output. It's, this is just fine. And then in 10h, hexadecimal 10, uh, we want. So here in particular, we can call it like echo character because this is literally what it is. What what it does, echo character. Uh, typed that has been typed that has been typed okay perfect so um, if I did everything properly it now should be able to actually uh, echo the characters that user is typing Oh my god, something has gone horribly wrong. So let's see, user input, you set input, user input 29, user input. Okay, so, okay, hold on a sec. Uh, this is a bit weird, so I do print. Oh, that's because, okay, that's because I forgot to say to jump to the next byte. So here, jump to the next byte. Next byte, and literally, we want to read next byte from the user. All right. So, oh man, what's wrong here? Next byte. Oh, I see what's wrong. Uh, it's the local label. Okay. Okay, great. Yeah, now now there is a bit of an issue. So when I hit enter, uh, what's a bit wrong here is that hold on a sec. I'm just not clear why it doesn't why it doesn't go to the next line that's that's my concern just hold on a sec guys need to figure out okay so uh i've been doing this um within the search game but for now i think that we can simply say um so this this is not this is just Okay, um, I can just make a placeholder for a while. Mm, jump to the shell loop. I just want to escape from the next byte loop because I'm stuck. Uh, I'm stuck in the next byte loop. Uh, next byte loop. So shell loop. So just a temporary commentary here. Um, uh, So take process next next command. Okay. Yeah, so oh my god, what is this? Oh not the jump. Um sorry, jump equals obviously. If this is the key uh, only the enter key for I was doing this for every key and enter 
and this is it guys finally can you believe this we got a shell it's almost like a linux shell yeah <laughs> all right so this is pretty it so this is kind of what we got so now would be able to print like snake and yeah i sorry just don't have don't don't yet have this um erase logic but let's imagine we uh, print snake and then we just go and execute this stuff and things like that so just probably um probably just just to make it fun a little bit what we could have called the execute here but so just just to give you an idea how it feels I'll, i will remove this i will just remove this so let's say here jump equals to execute and whatever game so this is just fixed here so no matter what we in particular do but let's say i say snake enter and it's tetris okay <coughs> so in this case let's say i type tetris and here we go and we play tetris so this is how it's gonna be uh with the difference that it would actually be searching for uh, a game whether it's available or not and if it is then it would be loading the game from this specific center uh, sector to the boot sector from the specific sector on the storage device to this to the boot sector in the random access memory and then we're gonna be able to play the game and later on we'll handle how to go back from the game to the shell uh, it needs uh, a modification for a game itself which is interesting as well um unfortunately i'm not smart enough to make it work for all the boot sector games i've found so far but generally the idea is clear simple and straightforward so i hope it would be possible for you guys to make make use of it for uh if you will want to embed your own game uh to make your own game running under game os Okay, so this is it from my side. Thanks for watching. In the next video, we'll implement the logic to erase the character. And see you, see you there. So, yeah. Take care, guys.